Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV and we've got our review for Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, a compilation of mini games based on the sports played at the Olympics. Obviously, it's different and, well it's not amazing either. Watch on and find out why. My previous experience with Olympics based video games, and I imagine that this is true for most of us, is with the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games tie-ins. Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 tries to emulate the party play feel of Mario and Sonic's unlikely team up. And it kind of gets there in a fashion, but it's a poor pale imitation at best. Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 has a selection of sports ranging from football, rugby sevens, table tennis, traditional tennis, volleyball, swimming, BMX riding and more. I tried the familiars first by taking Team GB into the football and winning the gold medal. It wasn't difficult at all, and it wasn't much fun either. The controls were janky and moving the players around the pitch felt sticky, compared to the fluidity of FIFA and PES. I know, I know, it's not supposed to be on the same level, but is it too much to ask for gameplay that doesn't feel like it's been lifted from FIFA 95? Goalies are the worst offenders, and my team's keeper was an actual moron. Thankfully, so were all the other keepers in the game. None of them could catch a ball to save their lives, which made knocking in dirty rebounds far too easy. Rugby Sevens, on the other hand, was actually half decent. The controls were still a bit of a mess, and the conversion kicks made no sense, but the rest was okay, and once again, I played my way to a gold medal. Boxing was another half decent effort and that was down to the controls. All you need to do is move the sticks to throw different punches and it reminded me a lot of real boxing, a game I've played to death on the PS Vita. No matter which sport you're playing, you get the opportunity to use a special move. In football, that's a powerful kick by your star player, which may score a goal or it might just knock the keeper on their ass. In Rugby Sevens, it's a burst of speed to get your player running away from the chasing defenders. In boxing, it's powerful attacks that can knock your opponents down. You get the picture. This fantasy feature might seem out of place, but the game is set in Japan, the home of strange fantasy, and the game itself isn't going for realism either. The presentation is good though, and the chunky characters look great, even if some of them don't quite look like your typical Olympians. As individual games, a lot of them fall into the trap of being far too simple. I get the need for accessibility and to open the game up to as many players as possible, but it shouldn't come at the expense of a challenge. It's just too easy, and for the most part, it's just bashing a button over and over again. To further drive this home, the game's simple nature is also its reward. By playing the games and doing well, you unlock tips, which are basically instructions that should have been given to the player from the get-go. These tips just tell you the rest of the control inputs that the game doesn't tell you when you first play a sport. So, for example, with football, the game doesn't tell you that flicking the right stick will get your player doing a faint move. Or, in the running sports, holding down L2 during the countdown to go will give your player some extra push. It's silly to think that the game is rewarding you for playing well by telling you how to play better with the full controls. Other games have a thing called a command list or a control section in the menu. Amazing. You can't make it up. I played Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 for a couple of hours and I think that was more than enough. I tried to play online but I couldn't find any players and I tried to tempt my boy into playing with me but even he could tell that the returns would be minimal so he stuck to Pokemon. Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 is not a terrible game and at times it's okay, but those times are limited to just a few of the games included. And just like the Olympics itself, you will forget about this once it's over. And that is the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful in some way. If you did, do us a favour, go on down below, drop a comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and give the bell icon a whack so you don't miss any future videos. The info box down below has our social media channels, website links, and supporters links where you can support the team if you can. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, bye bye.